Well, hello everyone. It's one of my favorite weeks of the year. It's Science Week in school. My name is Professor Bunsen, and I'm going to do some experiments with things that you can find in your house. We're going to think about solids and gases and reactions. We're going to think about wind and how it affects objects. That's a sound effect for wind. There's another way I can do a sound effect for wind, but <laughs> maybe I won't do that just now. And we're going to look at many experiments just with things you can you have in your house. Oh, well, I will ignore that. Does anybody know why the Santas took away the doorbell from his house? No? Because he wanted to win the Nobel Prize. <laughs> anyway, it's very important to be well prepared and safe when you're doing science experiments, even in the house. So I've got on my lab coat just to keep my clothes all safe. It's important to have adult supervision. I also, when you're working with different things, make sure you have goggles to protect your eyes. Oh, I just woke a tic tac -o. I don't believe it. Ah, I put it right in my eye. Anyway, make sure you have a goggles on to protect your eyes. Okay, so we're going to do some experiments now to, with objects we have in the house. First one, a hairdryer. So many people have these in your house and it's to get your, your beautiful hair. But let's see the effect it can have when we put an object on top of it, and if we can get it just to, hey, oh, 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 we can get him to float. We can maybe get him to go at an angle just like that. Up he goes. So, just with the simple wind of the hairdryer, we can affect the object. Let's try this. This is a toilet roll. I'm sure many of you have this in your house. And I wonder, can we get him to maybe come off of the roll? Let me see. There he goes. He's going to fly away. So we can use the, the hair drive. Just, yeah, there he goes now. Look at this. You can have lots of fun. We can blow him right away off of the thing. So that's a, just a simple toilet tissue of paper. Does anybody know how to make a tissue dance? No? Just put a little boogie on it, <laughs> a little boogie boogie. No, anyway, so we forget about that for a minute. We put him down there. So we're going to look at some more objects that we maybe you can have in the house and do some experiments. So you can get a balloon. Now, if you have a balloon and if you get a score, what happens when you put the score in the balloon? Oh, oh when it goes right, it, it makes a poof poof, but we can change the composition of the object by using some things we have in the house. So, inside this little plastic container, I have some vegetable oil just for cooking your chips. So if you just put a little bit on the top of the score, and then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get some on my fingers. I'm going to stretch it along. I'm going to make sure there's lots of vegetable oil over the little score. And then, watch what happens. I just get some tissue just to wipe my fingers, and we get, and we put them at the end of the balloon, and if we just go very careful, very carefully, oh, we put them right inside the balloon, and we change the composition just by using the vegetable oil, but be careful when you go on the side, because oh, sometimes you forget, and poof, you pop a balloon, but simple household objects to do exciting things. Now, some more experiments. I like this, one of my favorite experiments. Inside here is some vinegar. So you just get vinegar, you put them in the poof, whoo, you put them in the bottle, and you get some baking soda, and you get a little spoon. And what you do, I've already done this so not to make a big mess, you put some baking powder, spoon it inside to the balloon. Now, what's the most important rule in chemistry? Never lick the spoon. <laughs> anyway, you put them inside, then what you do is you get your top of your balloon, you stretch him over the top of the bottle, get him down, and then watch carefully. You put, you shake him, and you get the baking soda. Look, he goes down inside the balloon, and he starts to come up in the air. Look what happens. Up he comes, he's getting even, whoa, there's a chemical reaction happening inside the bottle, and all the gas is rising to the top, and it's making the balloon fill up all by itself. Whoa! Now we need to be careful, he's not going to fill up too fast. Oh, I had to stop the video for a little second to take the balloon off the bottle because he's filling up with the gas and he's going higher than
so here we are, we're outside because sometimes experiments can be messy and we don't want to make a mess. So this one, I'm going to teach you about gravity. That means what goes up must come down. So I have my assistant, Lara, my daughter. She's going to throw to me some eggs. Do you see the egg go up in the air? Then the gravity will bring him back down again. Okay, so let's have a little, okay, Lara, so number one, up he go, down he come, I catch him well. Okay, number two, up he come, woo, down he come, we catch him well. Number three, you see every time, what's trying to say? Oh. oh, be careful with the egg, sometimes it doesn't work out too well. Oh. Okay, now for this experiment, I read it online on the internet, and it's something to do with coke, and you put in the little mental sweets. I, I can't read, I didn't read the whole thing, I'm not sure what happened, but anyway, I think you put them in. You put them in the bottle, you have a little look. Oh, boys! Okay, oh, thought that's what happened, he come all the way up in your face. Be careful. Okay, I see you next time for more experiments. Science is all about experiments and research, looking at all sorts of data and trying to work out how things are made and how things work from the tiniest, smallest little things to the huge, big things. There's always been a fascination with space. And in America, NASA have worked so, so hard over many years, scientists and mathematicians, and they've actually been able to put man not only into space, but to get him to land on the moon, that's incredible. And even at the minute, you might have seen this on the news recently, they've put a car, not like one of our cars we drive around, but they've been able to lower it down onto Mars. And right now, as you're watching this, it's driving around and it's sending back information and data so that they can look at it and try and discover more about this amazing universe that we live in. We live in the Milky Way galaxy. And I'm sure you've looked at it in school, all the different planets, Saturn and Mars and Jupiter, and we're on the Earth and you have the moon and the sun going around us. And they think, I don't think anybody's ever counted them, but they think there are over 200 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. And wait for this, they think that the Milky Way galaxy with all those billions of stars and the planets that we know, including Earth, is one of billions of different galaxies all around our amazing, incredible universe. It's hard to even imagine that, isn't it? It's so vast, this universe that we live in. This is a picture of Scrabble Tower in Newton Arch with the sun just setting behind it. And when you look at that, the sun looks quite small, doesn't it? And if you're out on the daytime and you see the sun in the sky, it does look quite small compared to the Earth, and we think the Earth must be massive and the Sun's quite small, but that's just because it's so far away. It's actually huge. The Sun is nearly 150 million kilometers away from the Earth, which is why it looks so small to us. If it was any closer than that, we would just poof, frizzle up and burn. And if it was any further away, we would just freeze and die. It's exactly where it is, in the perfect place. And it's hard to sort of imagine. So let me see if I can help you. If you imagine that this ping pong ball is the earth, okay? So that's the size of the earth. Try and get your mind on the scale. If you have a wee look, can we see Newton Ards is somewhere? Well, we wouldn't be able to find it. So if you imagine that is the earth, the sun then in scale would be 15 feet in diameter. So if you imagine this picture behind me now of the sun, 15 feet in diameter, and that's the Earth, if we were to put it beside it. Let's you see exactly how big the sun does, doesn't it? You could fit 960,000 Earths inside the sun. It's massive. And it's just one of the stars in the Milky Way galaxy, which is one of billions of other galaxies in this amazing world that we live in. And you know what? Scientists, as clever and brilliant as they are, will never be able to fully understand it. Our brains are just too small to take it in. One of the most famous scientists in the world was called Galileo. And this is what he said about this amazing world that we live in, our universe that we live in. He said this, The laws of nature are written by the hand of God. I was asked just to say a wee bit about the Bible and what it has to say about science and particularly about this amazing universe that we live in. 
And there's a verse in the Bible, it's in the book of Psalms in the Bible, right in the middle of the Bible. And I think it helps us understand a wee bit what Galileo said about how God's hand worked in creation. This is what it says. When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. And when you're doing science experiments, your things are looked at in great detail, all the different parts, maybe underneath a microscope, to see how they all fit together and how things work. And the first book of the Bible, it's the book of Genesis, which means beginnings. And it talks about all the different parts, all the different days of God's creation. So it says that on the very first day, God said, let there be light. And God created light and darkness. And that was the first part, if you like of this creation. And then it says God created the sky and the waters. So that was the second part of this creation, the second day. And then it says on the third day, God gathered all the waters together, and that was the sea and rivers and lakes, and what was left behind was dry land. And under the dry land, they made trees and flowers and plants and all those things that we see and we can enjoy. So that was day three. And then on the fourth day, what that verse was speaking about, it says he created a light for the day, the sun. He created a light for the nighttime, the moon. And he created the stars. So that's the fourth day, the next part of this creation. And then on the fifth day, it said God made birds and all sorts of things to fly in the sky that he created. He created fish and all sorts of things to swim in the sea that he created. So that's the next part. And then it says, on the last day, on the sixth day, God created all of these animals that live on the world, and he created man. He created mankind, so he made man, and he made woman. So all these different parts of God's creation, if you look at them, you see an amazing creator at work. But just like in science, when we're looking to see how everything fits together and what that means and how things work, when you look at this amazing world that we live in, you see that it's not just all different parts, but it makes up one great created world. It makes the world that we live in, all these different things that God has made, all together make this amazing planet, this amazing universe that we live in. And I hope this week as you enjoy doing all the experiments and think about all the things to do with science week. I hope you have more success than Professor Bunsen, but I hope you have great fun in discovery. And I hope you maybe have a little thought for this big, big universe that we live in and think about the Bible teaching that it was designed by an amazing creator, by God. Have a fabulous week. Enjoy it. God bless.